And we're back. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, everybody. Today, look at there. There's the start date. Today, uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about the fabric requirements for the upcoming Medallion Mystery Quilt. Y'all, we are starting this date, which it seems so far away. January the 20th, 2023. That's the start date for this quilt. It seems like it is just forever away. But first, let me just start by talking about one of the reasons why I chose uh, some distance away. We're working on a Quilt As You Go project that's going to finish up in a couple weeks from now. And many of you are doing that quilt along with lots and lots of other projects. And we are approaching the Christmas season, which I know many of you are making your gifts and you're finishing up quilts for the year. And it is just a really busy time. So I wanted to give ourselves some space and some chill time between all of these things that we are fi finishing up and working so hard and diligently on here at Christmas and give us some time to uh, straighten up and settle down after the big hustle and bustle of finishing up this year's stuff and uh, give you some time to prepare for this quilt if you want to play along. Now, uh, this will be the first video in this series. So down in the description box, you're gonna find the PDF that I'm gonna show you and go over here in just a minute of the fabrics that I'm using and how much you need. And we'll go over that here in a second. You'll also find a link for the playlist of this series. So if you're watching this a year from now, you're gonna find all the videos in that playlist. You can go from this video to the next, to the next, to the next. But if you're following along week to week, save the playlist, you'll find it really easy, the next video. And uh, yeah, the playlist is a great place to find these videos really quickly. Let's talk about the cost of this quilt, y'all. While we're doing this quilt, the Medallion Mystery Quilt is gonna be free. So my biggest suggestion uh, is if you're already subscribed, fantastic, because even if you're not going to start this quilt with us, at least grab the PDFs, because during this series, while we're doing this quilt, the patterns for each one of the different parts of this quilt are going to be free. Now, I do think this pattern is going to be really fun, and the quilt is gorgeous. I can't show you that. That would take away the mystery of it but it's gonna be a gorgeous quilt. And I think it is worthy of going in the Etsy shop one day. <laughs> so shortly after we're done with making this quilt, there will be a cost. It's gonna be a $12 pattern, which I don't think is outrageous for a quilt pattern, first off, but also to have teaching videos showing you how to do each one of the different segments of the quilt as you go along. So the quilt cost will be $12. If you are watching this on the replay sometime after we're done with this quilt, okay? But if you're following along, grab the patterns while we're doing them. It won't cost you anything. Hello, everybody. It's so great. Thank you all so much for joining me today. So let's switch over to the cutting mat. I'm gonna not only show you the exact fabrics I'm using, I'm gonna show you how much it cost me to buy the fabrics for this quilt. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the cutting mat. Now I've zoomed in. I still think it's kind of blurry <laughs> on the screen, but I've zoomed in as close as I can get. And we're talking about the mystery medallion quilt. You'll see I'm using one, two, three, four, five fabrics in my quilts. Okay. Now let, let's just be really uh, candid and honest because my approach when picking fabrics for any quilt is you do not have to use these colors. You do not have to use the fabrics I've listed here. Uh, I don't have any connection with the brands of fabric I'm using or the place where I bought them. I'm not affiliated in any way. Okay. These are just the colors that I've chosen to use. These colors are going to match the carpet in this room that I'm putting this quilt perfectly. 
So that's the reason why I chose these colors, okay? You do not have to choose these colors at all. Uh, but what you will notice is that I've kept it simple. We're not using a broad range of colors. However, you can. You can go totally scrappy with this. We're going to talk about the fundamentals of how this quilt will come together. Hi, everybody. Will it make a difference if we use different colors? Nope. Nope. So let's talk about the five different colors that I'm using. So right next to the fabric swatches, you'll notice that I've labeled each one of the five different fabrics with a letter. We've got A, B, C, D, and E. When we do the clues each week, the pieces will be numbered or labeled with the corresponding fabric that I'm using to make these elements that will come together to form this quilt. Okay, so let's go through uh, what I'm using. Fabric A is a very neutral background color. Okay, so if you're swapping out colors, this fabric A, everywhere this fabric is going in the quilt, is just a neutral background color. Okay, you could do it scrappy neutrals would be gorgeous. All right, you could also go with a black or a gray everywhere where you see A, right? Um, we're going to call this a background fabric. I've chosen to use the Michael Miller Magnolia Collection uh, from the line Eucalyptus Seed, and I've even put the SKU number there if you're interested. When I start showing these fabrics and you're like, oh, I really love that. What is it? I've listed the SKU number because you can buy it several different places. You're going to need two and a quarter yards. Now, if you're like me, <laughs> and you're like, well, what if I, what if I make a mistake or... Uh, what if I want a little extra or give myself a little bit of an allowance? You could always round up like two and a half yards, right? You'll see what I've done is I've rounded up a lot because I'm not only making the quilt, I'm also testing pieces. I'm making demo blocks for you during the teaching videos. Uh, so I've actually added quite a bit to how much I've bought. But this is what you'll need for the quilt. How large is this quilt? This quilt is going to be 73 by 73 inches. I started off at 60 by 60, but I was like, no, it needs a border. <laughs> so two and a quarter yards of a background or neutral fabric. So if you're going scrappy, you need a total of two and a quarter yards altogether, right? For my fabric B, and I don't know how well this is showing on the screen, or even if you print it out, this is um, a burgundy, a grunge burgundy. Uh, so it does have tones of black in it mixed in, right? You will need a yard and seven eighths. If you wanna round up and say two yards, just to give yourself a little smidgen of leeway, you could do that. Uh, but that is a burgundy fabric grunge paint tonal burgundy uh, fabric C is a dark teal and I'm also using a grunge so I don't know if you can see it on the screen but there's some blacks mixed in with it grunge paint tonal dark teal um, one and one eighth of a yard is how much you need okay then we're coming down to fabric D, which is really hard to see on the screen. It almost looks black on the screen, but this is actually a chocolate uh, grunge fabric. So it's uh, brown with some blacks mixed in. Two and a half yards is what you need for this quilt of your D fabric. And then for a pop of brightness color, which coincides and matches really well with this, uh, I've chosen for my E fabric, the grunge paint tonal Caribbean. And you're gonna need seven eighths of a yard. You could round up and say one yard of fabric E, okay? Now, of course, you're not limited to only five colors, uh, but what you can kind of see from here is that uh, the teal fabrics are gonna play some vital roles in this quilt design 
with a pop of burgundy, right? We're going to have some pops of burgundy in there. And then this dark uh, chocolate colored fabric is going to really frame in some of these pieces really nicely. So, um, yes, these are the fabrics that I'm going to use. Now you'll see right underneath of here, you could use pattern fabrics. Oh, I've played with so many different combinations, and that's why it took me so long to actually come out with this is because I could not just lock down on fabrics, but finally I chose these. <laughs> but pattern fabrics would be lovely in this, Darlene. Okay, so uh, underneath of this grid right here, you'll see Fabric D, which is this chocolate grunge. Fabric D requirements actually include the yardage for the binding of this quilt. So when I say two and a half yards of the chocolate grunge paint fabric, that's including your binding. But if you wanted to do a separate, totally different color binding on your quilt, you're going to need five-eighths of a yard for the binding. If you're going by these measurements, this number has your binding included, okay? In addition to these fabrics and these amounts, you're going to need five yards of fabric, a 43-inch fabric, for the back. If you like to use a 108 fabric, a solid piece for the back, you're going to need three yards. You're going to have some left over after your quilt. But three yards of a 108 or five yards of a 43-inch fabric for the back. That's in addition to these numbers, okay? You're also going to need a quilt batting that is bigger than 73 by 73. 73 inches is going to be your quilt. And then uh, in a layering process, you always want to have some inches that go beyond your quilt top for quilting, right? This quilt is going to consist of some applique and quite a bit of piecing, okay? So with the applique, depending on your method, your favorite method of uh, applique, if you prefer to do raw edge applique, you're going to need some fusible for that. And I estimated about three yards of fusible, like heat and bond, right? And then uh, I wrote at the bottom that I purchased all my fabrics from Marshall Dry Goods. They have not come in yet, but I have the tracking information and I'm watching it closely. It's on its way to me. Um, again, I'm not affiliated with Marshall Dry Goods. I've only ordered fabric from them one other time and I loved it. The only thing I will say is that the green fabric, uh, I bought a hunter green fabric for a quilt bag. And on the screen, it looked one color. And when I got it, it was slightly different. But I still used it. It was still fantastic in the quilt. But the screen color was slightly different than what it actually was uh, in person. But that's kind of the nature of <laughs> sometimes when you see things online, right? The computer makes it look one way versus uh, what it is like an actual person. But I purchased all my fabrics from Marshall Dry Goods. And I have the receipt, so do y'all want to see how much I spent? Okay, let's move over here. I have my receipt from Marshall Dry Goods. Now keep in mind <laughs> that I rounded up quite a bit, all right, on all of my measurements because um, I'm gonna be dissecting some for teaching. I wanted extra for that. And uh, I was hoping to have some left over to go in my stash as well. So uh, the Grunge Paint Caribbean, that's this one down here. I purchased three yards because I really liked that fabric. You don't need three yards, but that's what I bought. Three yards of that was $17.97. I think that's a fantastic price, okay? Uh, the Grunge Paint Burgundy, I bought four yards. You only need one and seven eighths, almost two yards. I bought two extra. So four yards of that was $19.96. The Chocolate Brown, I bought three yards. You need two and a half. That was $14.97. 
Uh, the Dark Teal Grunge, I bought eight yards. You only need one and one ace. I'm gonna be using the Dark Teal Grunge as my backing. Okay, so there's five yards of that eight is gonna be the back of my quilt. So I bought the quilt back and one and one eighths and a little extra for the top. That was $39.92. That's a good deal for a quilt back <laughs> and extra fabric. The Michael, Mil Michael Miller Eucalyptus Seed, that's my fabric A. I bought four yards at $27.96. That's everything. So all together, I spent $120.78. So I have my quilt back and all these fabrics and extra, right? And extra for $127 and some change. I think that's a fantastic deal. I'm not telling you to go over there and buy it from them. I'm just sharing what I did. And when the fabrics actually come in, I'm going to share them. Uh, they're supposed to be here next week. So <laughs> they actually shipped them out the very next day after I ordered. They're supposed to be here on the 27th. Probably Monday. <laughs> so when they come in, I'll probably share them with you uh, next Friday during our live. Just so you can see them in person, right? And we'll see how accurate the screen color was versus um, what they actually look like in person. But I'm super excited. Yeah, Lila said, I always buy more than I need. I just can't help myself. I'm really hoping, Lila, that I have some extras going over in the stash. So I, I always round up. If a pattern says two and a quarter yards, I'll be like two and a half or three. Do you know what I'm saying? One and seven eighths, I'll probably be like two and a half. Because <laughs> what if you do make a mistake, right? And you're cutting... Uh, and to be quite honest, I don't have a huge fabric stash. Like what you see behind me, that's that's all of my fabric stash. And uh, almost all of it, except for bits and pieces that people send me, the rest of it has come from leftovers of quilts. It's not big yardage pieces of any of it. <laughs> it's just leftover from t-shirt quilts or whatever. But yeah, I usually round up anyway. Ah, Judy said, I purchased mine from, um, ooh, you got yours from Marshall Dry Goods as well, and rounded up to the next yard, and five yards of the Caribbean. Ooh, you got the Caribbean for your back. <laughs> That's like, I almost did that too. And the total was eighty-five, eighty-four, and she rounded up just to the nearest uh, yard. So she did round up some. And she got all of this plus her five yards of Caribbean for 85 bucks. That's a great deal when you are thinking about a quilt that measures 73 by 73. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, Tracy wants to know the difficulty level. That's a good question. Will it be bit beginner friendly? All right, here's the thing, y'all. There's gonna be all kinds of techniques in this quilt. Let me switch this over. And I have uh, sewers and quilters that watch my channel on all the ranges from extremely, extremely new, never done a quilt before, to someone who's been quilting for 40 years. They're all across the board. My hopes is, even if you're on that very, very, very new beginner quilter level, my hope is, that you at least, um, if you're not going to just dive right in head first, that you follow along and you watch the videos. And grab the pattern while it's free, okay? <laughs> just print it off and watch. Uh, because the way I'm gonna break down each one of the steps, I'm hoping that I break it down very beginner friendly. Do you know what I'm saying? We're not doing anything in this quilt that is extremely difficult. There are elements of this quilt that if you are someone who has been quilting for 40 years, you might do it in a way that is on that level. And I'm talking about doing some curved piecing, okay? You could do the curved piecing 
version versus the applique version. And I'm not gonna go into lots of detail because I don't wanna give too much away, but I'm going to keep it as beginner friendly as I can with the option where the more advanced quilters can do it in a different way. So that's my hope is that even if you are extremely new, at least follow along and take a look, okay? And the nature of keeping this mystery and not revealing what the quilt's gonna look like right off the get-go or a good part of the way in is that I'm breaking down the blocks into segments. So um, while you might be chain piecing 36 pieces, uh, that's one element of a block. I'm gonna break it down so you're not overwhelmed each week with a whole bunch of stuff to do. So we're gonna break it down. We might be chain piecing 36 pieces, um, but that's not gonna be an entire block. It's gonna be a segment or a portion of a block that goes in this quilt. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, Linda said, is it a quote as you go for each block? If you want to do this quilt, quilt as you go, here's what I would do. Uh, don't bring any batting in until the very end, right? Um, and you won't be quilting anything until the very end. I do think that once all of the portions, the blocks and the different elements of this quilt are constructed, right? Instead of sewing the quilt top together, you could put this quilt together as a quilt as you go. I do think you could. Um, yeah, I think you could. Robin says, I'm on their website now. They have lots and lots of good stuff. Um, and I will say I've only purchased from dry, um, Marshall Dry Goods one other time. I was very pleased with the order. Again, the, the green fabric was slightly different in person, but I kind of expect that sometimes. Everything seems brighter and different on the screen versus in person, and I know that. Tammy said, how many blocks? There's going to be lots of blocks. <laughs> lots of blocks. So... The, uh, the nature of this medallion mystery, uh, and I'm calling it a medallion mystery quilt, because in my mind, and just to give a, a couple of details and kind of just get you excited about the quilt, the quilt's going to have a feature block right in the middle. And then we are going to either be doing applique or pieced blocks that extend beyond that into a square quilt with a featured block in the middle. There will be some borders in there. Um, how many weeks to complete? Francis, I'm looking at about 13 weeks. So we're gonna break it down slow. I know many of y'all are doing lots of other projects at the same time, right? And if you're like me and you're like, oh, I really want to do that project, but I have so much other stuff going on. I really wanted to break this down into several weeks and break it down so that in each week, you're not just overwhelmed with lots and lots of sewing for that clue. So I think 13 or 14 weeks is what we're looking at. Uh, don't hold me to that because I'm in the process of planning those weeks out and what we're doing for each one of the clues, 13 or 14 weeks. Sylvia said, Lisa, if you do quilt as you go by sewing the seams on the top pieces first, then adding the strips on the back, it will work, I think. Awesome. That's good because I know lots of people, they love the quilt as you go method. Ethel said, is it better to see the quilt picture before we order the fabric? The nature of a mystery quilt, 
Many people love mystery quilts and some people, they want to see what the quilt's going to look like before they even purchase the fabrics, right? Because you might see the quilt design, the whole quilt to put together and be like, wow, I really wish I would have used this or that color, right? So my suggestion, Miss Ethel, is if you want to wait, print the patterns off each week and wait until the end and start to see this quilt come together and reveal itself. And then you can order your fabrics if you want to make the quilt. And uh, that might be the safer option for you. Uh, Fran said, would this quilt look good? with using dark background and using batiks for color B through E. I almost used batiks, Fran. I almost did. Oh, I almost did. I saved some gorgeous uh, fabrics that were batiks that were um, dark teals with pops of blue and burgundy in them. Some neutral color batiks. Yes, absolutely. I almost did batiks. I will tell you one of the main reasons why I went with the colors that I did and the specific fabrics that I did is because I all of these were available. And so I was like, okay, so I can get all of these. That's what I, I would do. Um, <laughs> some of the batik lines, I couldn't get some of the fabrics that I wanted to use. So I'd have to switch them out and I really didn't want to do that. But yes, batiks, patterns, you could do solids. Solids would look amazing. Absolutely. Um, Wanda said, can you tell us if this will be big enough for a bed or is it a display quilt? 73 by 73. In my mind, it's a little bit smaller than a queen, right? When I think of a queen, I'm thinking 84, 88 at least inches wide and long. Um, this would drape nicely, I think, on a full-size bed or a twin-size bed. 73 inches is not quite what I would consider queen size. The plans for my quilt, though, is I have a wall in my family room that needs a new quilt, and these colors are gonna tie in beautifully with a carpet that we have in that room. It's going to be gorgeous. Tammy, we are starting January the 20th. Francis said, can the blocks be hand pieced instead of machine sewn? If you are a hand piecer, my hat is off to you. And I certainly think, yes, absolutely. That would take me 25 years to finish this quilt top if I did it all by hand. I'm just going to tell you that, but not everybody is slow like me. You could piece these blocks together by hand if you wanted to. Quilting Girl 11 said, what about different blues? It's my favorite color. Absolutely. So what I would do is I would pick a neutral for the backgrounds, everywhere where you see A, when I give a clue and it says A, pick a neutral color. Neutral as in cream or white, grays or blacks, uh, some kind of background color. And then if I were swapping out the colors, I would do a dark blue and a like an accent blue, something that's going to pop. Uh, and then you could go really, really, really dark blue or something neutral like a brown or a black, right? You really do need an accent color to go with the blues. Something else that's going to pop in this quilt. So this B color needs to be different because I think you're going to miss that pop if you don't have something different right here. But absolutely, you could go with, um, you could go with dark, dark blue, medium blue, light blue. That would be pretty. Susan says, I need to order some needles. Can you tell me what size? Uh, for needles, let me just grab this pack and I'll show you what I use. 
And I need to order some too. Thank you for reminding me. My favorite piecing needles are these uh, Smith's Universal needles. Uh, and I buy them in an assorted pack. But my favorite for piecing, just normal quilters cotton fabrics, is the 8012. And you get like one, two, three, four of those needles. Then you get a couple of 9014s and some really smaller 7010s, uh, uh, which I use on some thinner fabrics, right? But the 8012 is my favorite for piecing, and that's just me. Yeah, this should be a lot of fun. Ooh, purples and yellows. Purples and yellows would be gorgeous. It really would be. I just want to see if I'm missing anything else. Oh, Joanne said, uh, I found you from your t-shirt quilting videos. Yes. Darlene said, you could always add borders to make it larger. Absolutely. Absolutely. The nature of the quilt is a square quilt, which I think is great for a queen size bed. Like if you added uh, another border, which you'd have to add to these numbers, right? To do that, to accommodate that. But if you added another border to this quilt, it would get you in the range of a queen size quilt. You would need to go uh, 73. 83, like a six inch border on both sides, top and bottom, left and right, 10 inch border. That's a wide border, <laughs> six to 10 inch border. Um, it would frame this quilt very nicely. It would not look like it didn't belong with this quilt. And it would bring you up to a queen size quilt if that's what you wanted to do. It wouldn't look like you just added on to a quilt design. Do you know what I'm saying? I think it would look appropriate. Terry said purples and greens. That's what she was thinking about. Yes, purples and greens. Jackie said, could I use Tula pink? Ah, oh, I think you could. I think that would be so much fun. She's got some really fun, fantastic fabrics. Um, my suggestion is if you are going to use Tula Pinks because they have some really fun designs, right? Uh, pick a neutral that's not so busy. I think if you did the whole quilt, Tula Pinks, with different designs, it would need uh, a solid in there to sort of separate because I can't tell you what the blocks are in order to see the design of the blocks. I really think if you paired a Tula Pink Fabrics with a solid as your fabric A and possibly your fabric D, that would work beautifully. Ella said, when my mother-in-law taught me how to quote, she always said, always buy a yard more than you think you need. I like her advice, Ella. I always buy extra too. Even with my buying extra, and I even went a little extra, extra. 120, how much did I say? <laughs> $120.78, and I got free shipping, um... At the time I did this, which might be all the time, I'm not sure, uh, orders over $50 shipped for free. So I got free shipping. $120 for all the fabrics, including the back of this quilt. So the only thing I need to add is a quilt batting. And I, then I have everything I need. Fat quarters. Uh, I tried to do, I tried to give you fat quarter measurements, uh, but here's the thing and why uh, I was having such a difficult time figuring out fat quarters for this quilt is because some of these fabrics, and I'll just say D, C, and B, 
these amounts include some borders. And so when you're cutting borders from fabric, um, that would be a lot of piecing if you were cutting borders from fat quarters. So I, I didn't give out fat quarter, like how many fat quarters of each that you would need because these three fat, one, two, three, yeah, those three fabrics do include some borders. So um, <laughs> that's why I didn't do that. Joanne said, so pattern on fabric A and D pieces, solid on the others. Da -da -da -da. I would say if you're going to do busy fabrics or fabrics that have a lot going on with the patterns, I would do a solid on A and I would do a solid on D. That's what I would do. Hazel said, I need to do a quilt for a six foot by six and a half foot. What size would I need, please? We are having three. We are having a new adjustment. But, ooh. Six foot. Okay. So six foot. That's what? 72 inches. Right? And then you need some overhang over that. I think you need... um like a queen size quilt, at least 88 by 88, Hazel. That's just me doing some numbers in my head, which I'm not, which I would not rely on that. <laughs> but if you wanted to make this quilt, Hazel, for that bed, I think you would have to add some additional borders or at least one bigger additional border on all four sides to accommodate that new bed. Amy said, can you order half yards? Um, I'm not sure. I just rounded it up. I'm not sure if you can order half yards at our um, Marshall Dry Goods. You might be able to, I'm not sure. I didn't even try, so I cannot be that helpful on that question. <laughs> I just rounded up. <laughs> you might be able to, I'm not sure. So that is my plan for this quilt. Ah, Darlene said Missouri Star will do that. That's another great resource online for fabric, y'all. And they have so many different fabric lines. I'm going to tell you, I was looking at, well, I don't have my note here. Um, there is a Moda designer. Her first name was Betsy. And I've lost that note now. It was up here. Betsy, who designs for Moda, I think it was, has a fabric line out that is gorgeous that I wanted to use so bad, but I couldn't find all the fabric specific fabric yardage that I wanted. So I decided to go with a different fabric line. But um, yeah, check out Missouri Star too. Wanda asked, when ordering the backing, do you, do you use size of quilt plus a quarter to a half of yard? So, Wanda, what I do to figure out the yardage that I need for the back of my fabric is I have an app on my phone, the Robert Kaufman app, and I put in the finished size of my quilt top, and then it'll ask you how much overage do you want, right? Because we always want our backing to be a little bit bigger than our quilt top for the quilting process. So I put in like a six inch overage, and that formulates the calculation of how many yards I need. And when I did this quilt, it was uh, like four and three quarters. So I rounded up to the next five yards, five yards for the back. But if you haven't gotten that app, it's free. Uh, you can get it in the Google Play Store. 
if you have an Android phone, I think you can do it on the computer too. Uh, but I like six inches, at least six on all four sides of my quilt. Having that extra at least six inches on all four sides of the backing on, on my quilt because I load my quilt on a long arm. I want at least six inches on the top and bottom, if not more. But with five yards, you're gonna have plenty of extra. You're gonna have more than six inches, actually, I think, at least on the, well, it's gonna be a square quilt, so <laughs> you're gonna have plenty. Sure, so Terry uh, uses another app. Uh, yeah, feel free to mention it. If it helps somebody, we would love to hear about it. And we will stick around while she shares that. But yes, I am so excited, y'all. I've been working on the clues, getting them together. I will say, um, thank you, Sylvia, for keeping an eye on the chat. Thank you so much. Um, have a fantastic weekend. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the paid version for the applique portions is going to include the SVGs for the applique parts. Um, yeah. So if you have a cutting machine and you wait until the pattern goes in the Etsy shop, that pattern for the entire quilt will include cutting files. Did she post it? I might have missed it. <laughs> Susie, can you go over the sew along again, please? It might just be easier if you come back and watch the replay. <laughs> I don't want to leave anything out and I think I've covered almost everything we're gonna start mm, I'm red hold on a second y'all am I frozen on y'all's end Hopefully you all are not buffering on your end. It looks like I might be. Um, and because I am buffering like that and my internet is kind of sketchy, uh, I don't want to lose you on all the details, Sue. So when we're done, come back to the replay because I walk you through each one of the fabrics, where I got them, how much I paid. I give some ideas on swapping the colors. We're going to be starting on. Da -da -da -da. Oops, hold on a second. <laughs> We're going to be starting on January the 20th. And, uh. It's gonna be free while we're doing it. It's gonna last about 13 weeks, 13, 14 weeks. We're gonna take our time. If you're a beginner, you can do it. I'm gonna walk you through it. If you're advanced, I'm gonna give you maybe some options that um, will push you a little bit. Um, I'm gonna give you several different ways of doing each part. You could cut the pieces with a rotary cut cutter, or I'm gonna give you templates that you can use, paper templates that you can use. Some pieces of this quilt, you can do paper piecing. I'm gonna give you those templates, but you can also do it with regular piecing. I'm gonna give you those templates. So you're gonna have many options to do each different segment. And so that's why I'm saying it's very beginner friendly. Um, with lots of different options for putting it together. 
It is a gorgeous quilt, if I do say so myself. It's going to look lovely down in my family room. And I can hardly wait to get started on it. It seems like it's so far away. But I'm going to tell you, um, this whole year has just flown by for me. I don't know about you. But especially with Christmas coming up and finishing up the stuff we're already doing. I know if you're like me, you have lots of stuff you're already doing. It's going to give us some time to source our stuff for this quilt and not stress out, finish the stuff we're doing. Um, I know many of us usually have more than one project going on at one time. So this gives us some breathing room so we can start this quilt towards the end of January with a fresh, fresh plate and uh, be excited about it. It's supposed to be fun, right? Yep, Darlene said, will we be able to rewatch? Yep. Yep, it'll be up on my YouTube indefinitely for however long I have a channel, forever. <laughs> and uh, you'll be able to come back if you can't catch the live. We're going to do the lives on Fridays at 12 noon, the way we usually do. Uh, and if you can't make them, the replays are always there. You can come back and watch them. Teresa, you're so welcome. All right, everybody. Now, uh, it's possible that you're going to think of questions uh, that even if you were here during the live, you're going to think of questions Feel free to come back and ask them in the comment section down below. And of course, if you're watching on the replay and you have questions, um, ask them. I try to be quick with answering the questions y'all here on YouTube, but sometimes I am so, so busy that it takes me a while to get to the questions. But um, if you have questions, ask them and I will get to them. <laughs> I'll try to be quick. <laughs> Yep, the link for the playlist of this series, this is the first video in the playlist for this quilt. Jump down to the description box, y'all. Grab this. That's going to give you how much fabric you need, right? And there's a blue link for the playlist. You can go ahead and save that now. And then you can just jump right to the playlist and join those videos when they start. Okay, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, I'm really excited about this quilt. I do think it's worthy of going in the Etsy shop, but get the patterns while they're free. And uh, if you're watching this video and it's two years from now, let's say it's 2025. I'm so sorry this quilt pattern is not free, but it's one of the biggest encouragements for you to subscribe to the channel, right? Because we do free stuff here all the time. And uh, if you subscribe and you're following along, even if you're not doing the current project we're working on, grab the patterns while they're free. And uh, yeah, have a fantastic weekend, everybody. I look forward to seeing y'all next Tuesday night for the mug rug. It's a pretty little mug rug. If you like mug rugs, that pattern is free too. Bye, everybody. Have fun sourcing some fabrics. Uh, that's probably... For me, picking the fabrics for this quilt was very stressful because I couldn't make up my mind. I just couldn't make up my mind. But it's probably also as stressful as I thought it was. It was also probably the funnest part of making this quilt. Because who doesn't like looking at fabric <laughs> and shopping? Now I do say, before we close out, I don't have big yardage pieces of fabric. I do think I could have sourced fabric for this quilt from that wall behind me. I do think I could, but I didn't want to. <laughs> I wanted some new fabric and I wanted it all to kind of coordinate together. That would be scrappy, which would be lovely. And by all means, if that's your budget, sourcing what you have, scrappy would be gorgeous with this quilt. Please do not let that stop you. Do scrappy, it would be lovely. All right, everybody.
Okay, so I'm going to go through Soteri and I'm going to look for it because I'm going to check out that app. Thank you so much. I just missed it because sometimes the chat goes by quick. Um, but thank you for sharing that resource. I'm going to go check it out. And uh, yeah, we'll see y'all next Tuesday evening. I'm going to go eat some lunch now. Ta -da, ta -da. All right. I love y'all. See y'all Tuesday.